Here we go. Today, my in guest, Ryan Brown, one of my just really good friends. Um, when we meet, we met. It's been about two and a half, almost three years ago now. Tap it up, man. Oh, maybe even four years ago now. It's a while ago. It's been a while, yeah. Um, so we met because we were working with a program, mm -hmm. Russian University, training yeah. dogs for veterans suffering yeah. from post traumatic stress syndrome. Yeah. Can you tell people just a little bit about that program that you started? Okay, so um, shout out to the Regenstein family. So if you don't live in Chicago, um, there's a woman named Susan Regenstein, and she, if you go to any of the museums, or you go to the zoo, or you go to um, just a lot of places in Chicago, you'll notice that the Regenstein, whatever, like the Regenstein Big Cat House at the Chicago at Lincoln Park Zoo, or the Regenstein Foundation. Uh, Susan Regenstein is just an amazing woman, and she gave that program a lot of money. A lot of money. A lot of money. Uh, because she loves animals, and she wanted to give back. She felt that veterans um, deserve service dogs, and that service dogs are super expensive. They're just... What up, Chanel? They're just Good morning. to train, to care for, and a lot of times veterans don't have the money to it. And, and just so so that people know, how much are you talking with a service dog? On the low end, a service dog realistically costs at least ten to fifteen thousand dollars to train. And that's low. That's low end. And that's mainly if you get a dog from the shelter and you work with an organization that's basically letting you train for free and possibly getting you food and just everything. Right. And that's all off donation. Now if you want somebody a lot of people are like, well, I want a service dog. I just want to walk in and pick up my service dog and maybe get my X amount of training as the handler and then walk out and be all good. You're realistically talking forty thousand dollars for a service dog, depending on what you want the dog to do. Like uh guy dog from blind, it can take depending on the breed of dog and how long it takes for the dog to mature and whatnot, realistically two to three years to train the dog properly. Right. And then you I mean I mean, a service dog, so people are aware, it can get up to sixty thousand, fifty, yeah, sixty thousand dollars. Absolutely. I mean, if you're talking like, absolutely. I want a dog that can turn the lights on. Turn the lights know. on, dial nine one one in case I have an issue. Um, that's going to comfort me. That's going to protect me. Um, it's, there's a laundry list of things you can ask the dog to do. Right. And it's not for every dog. It just it depends on what the person's needs are. It depends on. Their situation depends on what you need the dog to do. And then, you know, you find the right breed of dog and you have to find the right personality for the dog. Right. And then the dog has to be capable of learning all these things. Right. Um, for instance, if you have a vet who has problems walking and needs support, mm -hmm. you don't give them a French Bulldog. Right. That's just not going to work. Right. Or if you have somebody needs the lights turned on, again, French Bulldog, not really appropriate. Right. Um, but maybe a Lab or a German Shepherd or a Mal or Full massive would be appropriate. Right. But then you have to find the dog that has the right personality. Like, do you still have Tarzan? Yeah. Tarzan, not a service dog. Not a service dog. Tarzan's a very prey oriented dog. Right. He like he's very actiony. Right. He's got the drive. Yeah, the drive. He's got right. the energy. Right. But he doesn't have the right attitude. Right. So you have to have this basically perfect storm to get this dog. And, and that and then right there, that's the challenge is right. finding you're basically looking for the Michael Jordan of the dog. Exactly. The dog's making great let me, let me just back up so far. Our listening audience, mm -hmm. um, thank you for your service. Oh, you're welcome. I know who you are. Um, you're a fabulous <laughs> person. Can you just tell them about your military background? Okay, so um, I grew up in Wyoming. And the reason I say I grew up in Wyoming is because I left, I turned 18 at boot camp. Because the day I graduated high school, I was in the Marine Corps. I was in the Marine Corps boot camp. Okay. I was like, everybody else was part and I was like, boom, I'm in the Marine Corps. Um, so I did four years in the Marine Corps. I did Desert Shield, Desert Storm. That was my first duty assignment. Okay. Then I spent another three and a half years on campus in North Carolina. Okay. With occasional deployments to Virginia and the Great Lakes. Okay. Actually, the cruise to the Great Lakes. Okay. Um, and I was in Light Armored Recon Battalion. Mm -hmm. And I have buddies that are still in. Um, then I got out and I was a horrible civilian for about nine months. I, I was, love that. Horrible I was bad. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. You mean I have to pay rent? Oh, God. Oh, God. That's horrible. All right. So I went back in the Army. Um, there's a long story behind that, but we'll skip that. Did yeah, three years in the army at a place called Fort Irwin, California. Okay. Um, basically, if you look at a map of California, you find Death Valley. Okay. You go straight down, and there's this big hole in the map. Yeah. That's Fort Irwin. Okay. There's literally nothing there. Okay. 
Um, and then <laughs> I got out. I went to college, and in college, I was in the National Guard for a year. Okay. Um, that basically in my military service, I dabbled in um, helping with veterans and social work. Okay. For the next ten years, and then I ended up in a place called uh, Road Home Program at Rush University. Okay. Uh, they work with the Wounded Warrior Project. Yep. And their whole goal is to help vets get past their PTSD. Right. It's an amazing program. Um, I just left because I had a different opinion on the direction the program was going yeah. at the time. And we, I want to talk about that too. Okay. Um, we're we're going we're gonna to come back and talk about the challenge for the different programs out there. Mm -hmm. But then a lot of people, um, my, my dad was Vietnam, mm -hmm. grandfather of Korean War. Um, and back then it was called either shell shock yeah. or just leave him the fuck alone. Exactly. Like when they or he's yeah. in an episode, he's right? An episode, you know. But when when did you, when would you say that the term PTSD came about? It was really like really widely known in the early two thousands. It's always done. yeah, it's always been there. It's something else, but we've never really given it the weight that we do now. Because would you say we definitely probably was the same PTSD yeah. in like ninety six, ninety no, 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 absolutely not. Um, absolutely. Um, even back in ninety eight. When I got out, mm -hmm. if you had PTSD, what we call PTSD now, or if you had an episode, your career was over. You just didn't mention it. Because you didn't admit, you, you would not admit to it. You wouldn't admit to it. Right. Even, even 2005, 2006, if you right. were to admit that you had PTSD, right. your career was over. Like, wow. over. You could have been 20 years, you could have had everything, and that would have been it. So would you say then that you were like really then taught to like keep your... You were absolutely taught to keep it in. There was no weakness. There's an old saying, and you've heard the old joke, you know, you, you get a kid, you have a kid, and you, you uh, scream your knee, and your dad says, rub some dirt on Right. That was the military. That was exactly how the military was. Gotcha. And you, like, I have a friend, I served with a guy who got wounded um, to the storm. And the only reason he told everybody he was wounded, because his arm started bleeding so much they had to put a pressing on it. Mm -hmm. And wow. they're like, oh, okay, well, get back out there. Mm -hmm. um, and that was it. That, that was it. You did. And PTSD is real. Oh, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, because I, you know what I want to say? Um, even in 2015, my, my, my high school sweetheart, Alicia Jennings Moore, mm -hmm. Air Force, and she, she served, she went in in 1996. Mm -hmm. She got out around, I want to say, 2005. Mm -hmm. And she just things that she wouldn't want to talk about, she right. didn't talk about. And then in 2015, um, she took her life. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't remember in 2015, I don't really remember PTSD. Like, no. not really like. People didn't want to talk about it still. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about what PTSD is. Okay. Okay. So everybody's had that flight or fight syndrome mm -hmm. where your body just wants to react. Right. PTSD is basically like a CD skipping or a record skipping. Your mind can't get past that moment. Mm. So you, you didn't know how you. You've almost gotten that fight when you're high, in college or high school or grade school or whatever. And you're just like, I got to do something. I got to do something. I got to do wow. something. Wow. PTSD is your mind. You consciously understand that that's not the situation right now. Right. But underneath, the mind just keep on going, okay, I've got to do something. I've got to do something. I've got to do something right now. And you can imagine trying to do that every day, every waking moment. And maybe something, like I knew of that, um, you couldn't cr because of his PTSD, he couldn't go to intersections. Wow. Because that's where he got ambushed when he was nine. Mm. Mm. So we were walking downtown, and there was a group of us. He's like, I can't, I can't do the intersection ride. We've got to cross in the middle right. of the highway. And this is on a late short drive in the middle of summer. So I'm like, okay, I can, we can risk our, all our lives. We're going to have to deal with this. Right. But it's things like that. And people are like, oh, it's, you know, it's all in your mind. Yes, it is all in your mind. But that's the point. You mm. can't get out of your own mind. You, you can't escape it. And it's almost to the point it can be paralyzing. Oh, right? absolutely. It can be paralyzing. So, so then, just so people, and it, I, I, it's a rhetorical question, I know, but um, what, you know, it can be scary for someone around that person okay. at that point in time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If, if they have, is it the term never, episode? Well, yeah. How would you term that? Like, when they get, like, I don't know, is it, is it correct to say, politically correct to say stuck, or? Yeah, I think that's fine. Because that's what's going to happen to you. They're, they're stuck in this situation. They're trying to escape from it. They they don't want to be. No one wants to be. You know, on edge one hundred percent of the time. No one right. wants that. 
Right. But unfortunately, when you have PTSD, you're kind of stuck in this situation where you're 90, 100 percent all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it can be anything because your big line is adrenaline rush without the adrenaline. Right. Um, it can be like I had another vet. He couldn't sleep because he couldn't tell if the door was locked or not. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine? You looking at the door all night, thinking somebody coming through the door, somebody coming through the door. I mean, it's like trying to take a test in high school you never studied for, right. and you're always worried about it. But that's all the time for somebody. Now, what about now? Let's let's bring it. So, I think every, no one's going to contest the fact that PTSD is real. We Hopefully all, not. Hopefully we, not. Right. We know that PTSD is real. Now, what about? And I've heard uh, a doctor at the VA hospital who had been there for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. He said to me that the government does not believe that dogs actually can help with PTSD. So here's have the, you heard similar I've heard anything. So the thing is, um, the government, like the medical community, they're very slow to change. Let's look back 100 years. Everything was medicine, traditional medicine. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you some drugs. You're going to take the drugs. You're going to be fine. And then it became traditional medicine and maybe some therapy. Okay. And that's where Freud comes in. People are like, okay, well, this is the same therapy everybody does. Okay. And now we're just sick. Even now, you know, Freud was in the 30s, the 20s. Even now we're still like, oh, I don't know about this therapy stuff. It's a little weird. It's been 80 years. And, you know, the last 40 years has become medicine, therapy, and now mindfulness, what we call mindfulness, which is meditation, breathing exercises, possibly exercise. Um, and these all contribute to your mental health. And in the last 10 years, now you and I both know from our experience that dogs help out mentally. And, you know, you ask most pet owners, they'll be like, yeah, the dog is, he is therapy for me. Right. But the scientific community, the medical community, the government, they want to see evidence. They want to be able to say, if I'm going to throw this money at it, I can say this is going to work this amount, statistically this amount of time, and this is how much it's going to improve. Now, there are beginning to be get, become um, studies that say, yes, the dogs help in a way that we don't know how. Mm -hmm. We can't prove how they work. We can make a hypothesis why they work. and But it's slow because you have to have very controlled conditions um, because you want to have be able to say, exactly in this situation, this is going to happen. But the problem is we're dealing with dogs, and dogs are living animals. Mm -hmm. And you and I both know every dog has a different personality. Right. So that's a variable you have to account for. And then you have the patients and how the dogs and the patients interact. There's completely different things. Even if you were to take the same dog, well, like use Tarzan. Right. How Tarzan interacts with you versus how he interacts with me how, versus how he interacts with anybody else mm -hmm. is completely different. Right. So that's another variable we have to toss in and we have to say, okay, how do we account for this? Mm -hmm. So, yes, dogs do help. No, the government does not believe that they are the be-all, the end-all. And it's going to take a while for How many, so, obviously, the VA will supply some dogs. Yes. How many dogs would they supply then? I mean, because, when, just let me back up for a second. What, what's the stat on the daily suicide for vets? The last I heard, it had gone down um, numerically to 20, 20 vets a day. 20 gone down? Well, 220. It was 22. Now, Wait, 20 that's days. going down? That's going down. But statistically, it's the same number of vets. We just don't have as many. Wow. Vets. Wow. That is like, that's, yeah, that's yeah. super. I guess. So he. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. statistically, it's the same number. It's 22 vets a day per cat. 22 vets per day. Per day. Are taking their life. Taking their life. And wow. it's not always the younger vets. Like, people are like, oh, he's so young. So no, it's a lot of the older vets, like the Vietnam vets, the Korea War vets, the, um, the 70s vets, the 80s vets, because they just, no one has ever told them, hey, it's okay not to be okay because you have PTSD. So we're averaging then close to 600 vets per month. Yes. Wow. About 7,200 a year, roughly, yeah. Wow. Veterans. Veterans. People who have served at least six months, by government definition, a veteran somebody has served at least six months in the U.S. military. Does that include boot camp? That includes boot camp. That's like, okay. Yeah. So you don't have to actually... No, you don't have to go to combat. You know, 
And not every veteran goes to combat. You know, right. uh, a lot of people go to Germany. Right. And maybe you were in Germany in the 80s and nothing happened. Right. But that doesn't mean... Because my, my ex, she, she she never went to combat. Right. right. Something happened. So something things happens. can happen. Oh, something happens all the time. Um, it can be... Um, I've lost count of how many memorials I've gone to in when I was in. That's, wow. Yeah. I mean, I went to combat, and yes, we had a memorial for a guy who died in combat. But the rest of them, I, whoops, sorry. I, I mean, one guy, two kids were playing in the Humvee out in the desert, and they hit a, essentially it was a dip big enough to hit a Humvee at about 60, and you can imagine what happens. Wow. Um, wow. Another guy, there's a place out in Fort Irwin called Crash Hill, and the reason we call it Crash Hill is because that's where the A-10 crashed, just plowed right into the ground. Um, one guy, he was guarding our ammunition when we were down in Georgia doing some exercises, Wow. And they were playing quick draw McGraw with a loaded weapon, and he shot his buddy. Wow. So these are all... So these things have nothing to do with combat. Nothing at all to do with combat. It's just, which makes sense. You yeah. think about these are humans yeah. these are with, just things with that weapons, have, explosive. Yeah. Well, you're playing with 60-ton vehicles. Things are going to happen. Right. right. Like, wow. These things just happen every day. The military is just a very dangerous place to be. Right. Um, and I, I'm sure that day-to-day... Managing that day to day stress is something that can go wrong, yeah. can create PTSD. Mm-hmm. And um, I just want to, so I know for a fact that dogs can help. I've yeah. seen it firsthand. I've seen people tell me stories like, Alfie oh, Shepard, come on in. <laughs> we have another guest, ladies and gentlemen, the magnificent Alfie Shepard. What's up, man? Alfie Shepard, Ryan Brown. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, how you doing, man? Let me, let me pull Alfie Shepard up. What's up, brother? What's going on, man? Good to see you. Good, good, good. Good to see you as always. Yeah, that's a little gift. A little gift basket for you guys. Slide it right there. I'm going to grab one of them. Let's go. Make sure I get everybody in the frame. Ryan, do you see this? Yeah, I'm going to wire There we go. Take it to the room. No worries, man. No worries. All right, cool. Everyone's in. <laughs> um, and just so you guys know, Albie Shepard was a guest last week. We got a lot of feedback. Um, Albie, Albie, um, was a professional baseball player for the Baltimore Orioles. Nice. Um, fabulous story um, that he had, and he also. Oh, we went to school together, right? Um, and this is really actually the synergy of the world just all comes together because I don't know if you remember Chemo World. Oh yeah, you heard what happened? No, what happened? Chemo. Chemo World, a friend that we went to school with, he committed suicide. Oh man. Yeah, and um, we're talking about suicide today. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan Brown um, um, worked at Rush University in a um, road um, road home program. Um, working with veterans suffering from PTSD right. and training dogs to train um, those um, training dogs to help vets. But yeah, a friend of ours, yeah, I just found out um, chemo. So peace to everyone out there with Chemo World. Um, yeah. We went, he graduated yeah. with us. Oh, yeah. Super great guy. Played football with us. Linebacker. Oh, wow. um, and when I went back and read his Facebook page, you can see. That breakdown. Mm-hmm. It's almost kind of scary yeah. and eerie. Just like anyone out there, anyone talking to anyone. Um, so, um, what I'm asking you, Ryan, mm-hmm. so with, with the veterans, yeah. I'm going to bring you in, Albie, because I know like you went through a lot uh, with you know, um, your awesome. transition of getting to that point. But Ryan was saying that 20 vets per day mm-hmm. commit suicide. Yeah. Like, unbelievable. Yeah. Like, that's some unbelievable stats. And I know that dog, the power of a dog, we all have dogs mm-hmm. um, that can change a person's yep. life. Because a dog, how if people aren't aware, a dog comes up to you, puts their head in your lap, mm-hmm. puts their paw on you. They Basically, people think it's magical. It's really not. It's just yeah. a dog that's so well trained, they're balanced. Mm-hmm. They're sensitive to change in your pheromones. Yeah. They, since they change in your pheromones, the first thing that comes to you, they realize, oh, elevated heart rate. Yeah. The first time they come to you, they got pet. So they say, oh, that smell equals getting pet, <laughs> you know, yeah. that increase whatever mm-hmm. equal, you know, the increased heart rate right. mean, means getting pet, increased respiratory. Um, I, what I want to jump over to also, um, I don't want people 
you know, it's the other tough thing people don't want to talk about right. is not just PTSD. You also have TBI, yeah. um, traumatic brain injury. Mm-hmm. You also have military, um, sexual, military trauma. sexual trauma. Can yeah. you just break that down because right. people aren't aware of the TBI? Okay, so TBI, TBI is basically some kind of brain injury. Um, it can be a concussion or a TBI. Um, so I probably have a couple TBIs, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe not severe ones, but it can be you're riding in a vehicle, you hit a bump, and boom, you slam your head against the wall. Right. And our military vehicles are usually solid and steel. Like my vehicle is all a giant aluminum truck. Right. So you slam your head against that a couple times, that'll help you. Um, concussions from artillery coming in, flashbangs, things like that. Mm. That'll all work on you. <laughs> um, military sexual trauma is exactly what it sounds like. Basically, it's rape. Yeah. sexual assault, anything like that. Um, and that one's a little bit, I don't want to say it's worse because that makes it sound like rape isn't bad. Um, but in a way, it's more personal in the military because in the military, you're always taught to, to trust your supervisors. Right. These are people who are, it's like your coach. Right. You know, your coach is this person. I'm supposed to trust coach. Right. Coach says something okay. I guess that's the way it is. Right. Um, no. You know, if your coach is, sexually assaulting you or coming up and touching you in appropriate ways or making comments, deal with that. And that not, how new is that then? Because we were, before you got here, we were saying PTSD, they really wasn't saying that when we were growing up. Mm-hmm. We didn't, we didn't, we was called leave that alone. Mm-hmm. You mean, mm-hmm. but now what, how, how, we know that, we know what PTSD is, but in a lot of people, were you aware of MST, the military sexual trauma? No. Well, I've heard, I've heard of that. I know it's called that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, Probably the last 10 years, really, has it okay. come to the forefront. Right. I mean, it's unfortunately been going on for ever. Right. Um, but, you know. But there was no name for there it. There was no name for it. It kind of slipped under the rug. It's kind of ignored, for lack right. of a better term. Right. You know? Oh, this doesn't really happen. You're making this up. You just try. You got disciplined, and you're trying to get this officer in trouble or this NCO in trouble. Right. So, yeah. But hopefully, it's becoming more of a thing that we pay attention to. Hopefully. Right. Well, and it, it's it's a huge it's a huge, huge deal, deal. Yeah. and I mean assault is a huge deal. Um, you know the situation mm-hmm. I went through where I was yeah. assaulted, yes. um, sexually assaulted, which it was it was crazy because um, one, no one believes you, right? And then two, um, even when I went to the police, the first thing I remember the police officer saying she was taking the report, and then she um she looked up, she said, "Wait a minute, but you're a man." Yeah, and she said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to say that because um, that's the thing too that um, with the um, different team members I worked with, remember a guy told me the mm-hmm. hardest part for him when he said it wasn't him being assaulted by a staff sergeant, and he was said he was like 18, and he had just got enrolled. Um, so I think like because you're a coach, I mean, right. People, right? You trust yeah. your coach, you trust your it's, it's authority. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, number one, but then two, he said. With the guys, no one believes you. No, so I can only, you know, when women right. go through it all the time, mm-hmm. and then you have military that's yeah. like keep secrets in general. Yeah. You're not supposed, you're supposed to be right. tough. You made a steal. You're not supposed to say right. um, anything about it. Yeah. Um, what would you say to people out there that might have a family? Because people are coming back. Yeah. You know, I mean, this time with COVID, mm-hmm. I mean, I think we haven't really been thinking about our military because it's, it's a suicide rate in is twenty. Mm-hmm. Right now, and um, I, our friend Chemo, but I know, so I know, I've heard at least five suicide people that have said that they know someone has committed suicide mm-hmm. since COVID and George Floyd. Mm-hmm. What does someone say to someone that's military coming home? Because sometimes I think people don't know what to say at all. Um, for people, family members in the military, it's kind of hard because you don't really understand. The military is a completely different culture. Like, I assume like college sports, like it's a different culture. You know, you go home, you come from home like 18, 19 year old kids, and then there's a completely different culture, this different attitude, this way of talk, doing things. And, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, kind of a time when you really grow up, become an adult per se. And that's very formative. And then you go back home and you're like, I can't really talk to you people because you don't really understand. Mm. So for people coming back from the military, you might say, you know, do you want to talk to some other vets? Like, Recruiters are probably not your best choice, but if you have some friends or, you know, a friend who's a veteran or a family friend, member who's a veteran, encourage them to talk to them. Just, you know, hey, how, you want to go get a beer or you want to just talk about this or you, you want to just hang out. Right. You know, 
No one wants to hear that. Do you want to talk about it? Right. The best, yeah, man, I, I don't want to right. talk about it. But Alvin, like, do you do you work with any vets at all? You got know Alvin, you can personal yeah, coaching. Yeah. yeah, there's quite a few that uh, have been on the team now and in the future. I mean, I, I work with anyone that's looking to better themselves. Right. Period with their health and financial. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, do you do you have you worked with any PTSD in your? Uh, you know what? Like you said, it, it's not talked about. Right. right. So, so you know, I try to get to know my my teammates, my friends that I, that I help right. uh, as much as I can without crying. Um, you know, I haven't. I can't say that I've been told I have. So I guess you can't ask. I can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't. Right. I can't speak upon it because I haven't had anyone to literally tell me yes, right. I've had that happen right. to me. Right. Although I know it exists. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think um, that's the thing I truly admire about you and your story. Um, cause you, you know, you professional baseball players. So that means at some point, and I'll be just be bragging about you mm-hmm. since we were in grade school, you were destined to become, everyone said you're going to be a pro athlete, you right. know? Um, and then you did, it. Right. you know, you beat the odds, you become a professional baseball player, but then, you know, things don't go your way. Right. You have this freak accident and then you gain all this weight. Right. Start using drugs, so suicidal thoughts. I mean, start eating, you know, yeah. like you didn't look like an athlete. No, it was like you were, didn't even look like someone that had even bowled, did bowling, let alone no, exactly. yeah, baseball. Was, that was not an athlete. That but um, that point. how do you um? Where I'm going with that is because I, you know, we're all. I mean, I know, like, we've all been through some. I know all of us personally. Right, <laughs> right. I know me. Right, but um, I, I think that's the thing too that people have to start sharing. That story, yeah. you mean more so that people that aren't afraid that's to say, "Hey, yeah. I have PTSD." Because if you, you know, and that's I'm seeing it right now too, firsthand with the with the COVID. I mean, mm-hmm. last weekend, I had never seen anything like that in my life as far as the intensity and anger. Mm-hmm. We're just doing a peaceful dog protest, walking 5K. We're going to end up in one place, and just the amount of anger and stress because people are relieving, yeah. you know, trauma that happened way mm-hmm. back. Um, but then, what are some things that you would say that helped you? Because you experienced right. a lot. Of, I mean, you lost. Uh, you lost the. I mean, I lost when I got sexually assaulted. I lost a million dollar contract because they canceled the contract. No one believed me. <laughs> so I was, that stressed me out. You know, right. all because of one action. I take now. I take responsibility for even putting myself in a situation for that to happen. Right. Which at first I did not blame that person. Right. Mm-hmm. But you know, you lost millions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so what? What do you? What? What, what gets you out of that mindset? Yeah, I tell you what. So uh, you know, more than millions, which obviously can be very <laughs> devastating. <laughs> <laughs> devastating. It was the, my identity. Yeah. You know, that's who I was. Yeah. I mean, I was a pro athlete. I worked my tail off for years to get to that point. Um, lots of work, and so when it all crumbled down because of a freak accident, you know, I was 24 years old. I was a first round pick, so I had a lot of money in the bank, and like you said. Uh, millions possibly to come, and and so it, it hit me hard, and, and I didn't want to talk about it. The last thing I wanted to do was talk about it. Now, this is the thing, though. I encourage you to talk about it, because mm-hmm. it, I kept it in for 13 years, and mm-hmm. in those 13 years, wow. I became addicted to drugs, food, alcohol, depression. I mean, I was, I was, that was all part of the, the 13 years of, of dealing with it. Suicidal thoughts were part of that. I had a gun in my hand at one point. Mm. I and mean, that's something you don't joke around about. Right. And so I was there. I was right. at that edge. And right. Unfortunately, and God willing, I didn't do it. And right. So, so the, what got me out of it was when I, when I, well, I had the aneurysm. I had a brain aneurysm back in 2013. I had been praying for a long time for help. So the Lord helped me get out of it, first of all, because he gave me that aneurysm. And that was a blessing. But after that, when I said it's over, I'm done with that lifestyle, I literally talked about my, my talked about. I, I, I put my story out there. I can't. Ex- I can't express enough how important it is to 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 let it out because right. you you hold it in. It festers and festers right. and festers, just like anger with anything. It right. festers and eventually something's going to trigger it to explode, and you don't want that to happen. Which right. could be suicide. Which could be right. you know rage. You end up in jail and right. whatever. And or anger against killing somebody, somebody right. or any, anyone. You don't know. Right. So get it out. Right. So my what I did that really served me and my family was I let it out. I told my story. I'm not, I, I wasn't worried about, you know, I was, a, I was a drug addict. I, I was functioning. 
I wasn't a, I wasn't someone that you looked at and said, oh, he's a drug addict. Right. You didn't know. Right. No, I didn't want anyone knowing. Right. In my because you were because you were Albie Shepherd, right? <laughs> you like, know, like, but I was you yeah. know, the, 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 the yeah. all American yeah. blah blah. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. could but you I be a drug addict? Exactly. Right. Yeah. I didn't want anyone knowing that. So, right. So so, but it was eating me alive. Right. Literally, right. like I'm sure the yeah. PTSD and everything that yeah. is eating you alive because you don't, right. you just don't know what to do. Right. I I encourage someone to if they're going through any kind of trauma to get it off their chest or right. talk to someone about it. But that's easier said than done because like with the, yeah. with the vets, for example, yeah. I mean, because they, I mean, I I remember one of my friends, um, Ralside, we I had a work trailer, Ralside with the dogs, training the dogs, and he had an episode and he went inside the trailer to start throwing everything yeah. off. He's like, all the dogs have to come in right now. I mean, yeah. obviously. Um, and he would never talk about no. any of his issues, but certain things could totally trigger him no. where there's no stopping him at all. But then, um, uh, what are you like when Alvy said talk about it? But then, for some people, yeah. just listening to the story can freak them out, right? right. You mean, yeah. well, so, here's the thing so, for a lot of the vets, when they talk about it, they don't they see themselves as monsters, mm. like. I did this horrible thing. No one's ever going to trust me. No one's ever going right. to me. No one's going to love me. Right. And then you talk to the, maybe you talk to a therapist. Therapists get therapy already. That's one of those things. It just happens. Right. So, and it's called secondary trauma. So you can, it's not that you're a monster or whatnot. You just did what you had to do. Right. And it can be hard to accept, but that's important. And that's, Getting back to the dogs, that's kind of why dogs are so, in my opinion, so valuable for right. vets because they don't give a shit. Right. right. The dog just wants you to have a good day. They love you no matter yeah. what. Yeah. They, they don't worry about yesterday. Right. They don't care about what you did two weeks right. ago. They just want you to have a good day, have a good day with you. Right. That's it. They love you no matter yeah. what. Yeah. That's, that's the whole goal of a dog. Just, right. We're going to have a good day today. Right. Whatever happened yesterday, yeah, who cares? We're going to have a good day today. Right. And for somebody with PTSD for somebody or anything to come in and say, we're just going to have a good day today. I love you no matter what mm. is incredible because they, right. every day you're thinking, man, I did this horrible thing. No one's going to love me. No one cares. Like in your case, my career is over. I don't even know what I'm going to fucking do now. Right. No, I was like, I don't give a shit. Right. I don't care about that. Right. Shit. Yeah. That's all BS. Yeah. Right. Are we going to go play now? Because right. that's what I really care about. Yeah. Right. And that's, what makes the dog so valuable for right. somebody with PTSD or TBI or MST. Right. I mean, there's a whole list of secondary things like they are protection and they teach you responsibility and they help you get off the couch and all these other things. But the most important thing to me is they just don't care about what you've done. They want and you and that's the beauty of dogs. So we did this dog walk um, last Saturday. Um, and the theory behind it is because dogs bring people together. Yeah. Right. You have a dog, two, right? Two dogs. Mm -hmm. And we're talking dogs, we're gonna talk nutrition. Yeah. We met because of dogs. <laughs> like mm -hmm. clearly you came and like, hey, yeah. are you interested in working with Rush University? Yeah, we're trained yeah. everything. Yeah. And we became buddies. Yeah. We don't work with Rush anymore, but we're we still friends because yeah. of the dogs. So that was my theory with everything that's happening right now with COVID, George Floyd crisis, racial crisis, depression, all the stuff that's going on in the world, dogs bring us together. How is your dog, would you say, um, has helped you because your family's going through a lot of different right. things. How would you say your dog has helped you? Right. And there's, like you said, there's, there's no, um, there's no judgment. No. You know, dogs, I mean, there's times when I'm upset and I might be a little angry and, and the dogs, you know, my dogs will come and, and like you said, they'll come up to me and put their head on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. or, or they want to play and it, yeah. it, it's there. They don't, they don't have that emotion right. in the sense that they're like, you did something wrong and then no, 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 right. you said something. So the love that you get from the dog mm -hmm. is is um, is unconditional. And that's Would you what say I that your dog kept, because yeah. just stupid question, did, did you, are you at a point where you feel like your PTSD and your trauma from your past when you were old is gone? gone? Or do you, I, yeah, do it you, took a while, but yes, I do. I really yeah. do. I, I feel like I, I got myself out of that you know, funk, so to speak, and I say that respectfully, uh, because I I found a community that I could really, you know, be a part of that really accepted me for who I am, and, and, and it just it just embraced me. And then, the, like again, my dogs were all part of that. My family, obviously, part of that. I just got myself out of that. You know, when I had that second chance, you know, you know, 
when you when you almost die, mm -hmm. which obviously a lot of military yeah. people almost die, right? Right. Um, it, it, it can trigger like, wow, I'm I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. I'm very blessed to be alive. I, I have a second chance. Mm -hmm. Some people take that chance. You know, mm -hmm. some people don't. Right. I took it. I said thank you. And I said I'm done with that lifestyle. And that, that was, was the anger. I mean, I, that was the aneurysm. That was my trauma. Mm -hmm. I mean, the trauma, the initial trauma was losing my career. I mean, that's right. the basic. That was the initial trauma. But then I put myself in trauma with all the things I was doing that wasn't helping me physically, mentally, uh, financially, anything. And so whenever I uh, put that aside because of my second chance, um, I, I started living up to my potential. I started following people that were uplifting. Mm -hmm. I started uh, being a better person overall. And and I think you know getting myself healthy was the was a big was a huge part of that, right? Because I, I wasn't healthy for years, mm -hmm. and so the healthy was not just physically. Yes, I'm physically healthy, but I'm mentally healthy now, right? Um, and again, there's no magic pill for that. It was it was lots of personal growth, lots of uh, personal development, uh, and being around uplifting people, which is what um, myself. So I, so we know dogs therapy. We're all agreeing. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to ask you both the same question and get your replies. Imagine the Shepherd family with no dog. Okay. What, ha what happens? Man, I don't even know. We've had dogs the whole time. I mean, my wife and I, uh, you know, before kids, we had, uh, uh, you know, we had Tucker, who is, is, we had to put him down about two months ago. So that was sad. Maybe even longer, three. Um, so we had him, and then we got Lola a year later, uh, which we still have Lola. And then we just got our Afghan hound, which is a beautiful dog, and, you know, handful. But she's, yeah. Uh, so yeah, dog, man, our family without dogs. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't even want to think about it. Honestly, it's been such a blessing to have them. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's it's you know walking in the door, getting the tail wagon. You know, mm -hmm. you know, it's you know when you're having a bad day, that that, that right. means something. That right. means something. It's right. like, it's like oh, there it is. Now some positivity. And yeah. your your wife loves this animal. Oh, oh yeah, that was well. That's why we got you know. That's I've never dog. heard of an Afghan hound. Right. You, you used to I grew an Afghan hound. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So when I she she mentioned this dog, I looked it up. I'm like. What? Yeah, this hair, hair is right. it's like Fabio. Right. How are you going to take care of this beautiful, majestic dog? Oh, I right. love that dog. It's yeah. just, I mean, she's, I can't, it is, it's, a, it's, a, you know, when you look at her, it's like, oh, like, wow. Right. Is, and she's just getting started. She's right. a pup. Right. Um, she's, serious, she's, she's a serious dog. She's a serious dog. So there's a lot of work to be done with her, uh, as you know. Um, right. But yeah, I can't even imagine with, you know, without the dogs. I, I can't. And that's so amazing, too, because, um, of all the connections we have, um, and what surpasses race, right? Um, totally, is that even if I didn't know you, if you called me up and said you have an Afghan hound, yeah. right? Um, and this is where dogs cut through and can help us heal. That I've had this is the first dog my grandmother bought me in 1978 right. in Bellwood. Right, Bellwood right. was all Italian. Right, right, right. right. For those people out there, I've been around Italians for a long time. <laughs> I heard right for this last name. Right, right. No, no, no. I don't a lot of pain for this last name. <laughs> but Tori Allen Sanzoni in 1978, Bellwood, we had these Afghan hounds. Right. And I think back now, I'm like that because it's a tough, it's, it's an Afghan yeah. gun dog. Yeah. Right. It's a for real dog designed to protect. I mean, Afghanistan, yeah. that place it's is a no, tough way. No, People joke. say they can only describe it like being on the moon. Yeah. I mean, it's like, but here you have an Afghani mountain dog in the city. Right. I mean, so the things that I know I have to do to teach and coach you through. Right. Which has been a lot of coaching. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I've been babysitting with you guys. Right. I already know how it is. Because yeah. one, to get the dog, you're covered and you're not ready for training yet. Yeah. You're going to be calling me about hardcore in about I get, You got about eight more months before yeah. you call me up begging me. Yeah. Like, please, please. Something, something. <laughs> All right. We're gonna yeah. give it finally, <laughs> but I but I know the process. You yeah. know what I mean? Like people don't bring those no. dogs, the kind of dogs, to me when they're babies. Right. They should. Yeah. I never see. I never actually never even seen one as a puppy. Really? When they find no, when they find me, they're like this eyes. Right. They're, like, they're, <laughs> like, they're, <laughs> they're two years in. They're like, okay, fine. Yeah. You can't. But it's that connection that we are developed um, through dogs. But Ryan, the same question for you. Imagine life no dog. Oh, I don't even have dog. to imagine. So my dog is fourteen years, fourteen and a half years. I had to put him down about three months ago, almost. Oh, wow. yeah. Sorry, man. It's it's all right. Um, you know, it was it was his time. Yeah, we kind of knew. You know, it was like yeah. I don't want to prolong this because it's not it's fair happening. to you. Right. Um. So first night, I just like was lying in bed. I was like, my place is really quiet. Yeah. My dog was really quiet anyway, but I'm like, wow, this is yeah, really, really yeah, click, 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 yeah. Click the carpet, whatever it is. Exactly, you know, and he would hop on my bed, and it's like, wow, this was a really big bed, actually. Yeah. Um, and it's just, my whole place is 
you know, Brad, there's no fur all over my house anymore. But I've got a lot more stuff now because I was just redoing my place. But it doesn't feel as full anymore. Yeah. Um, so, you know, now I'm in the process of getting a new dog and trying to get a Boceron. So I'll be coming to you a lot. Right. Because, okay, okay. So Boceron's are French Shepherds. Mm. Um, serious dog. They're serious dogs. <laughs> like, Apparently... <laughs> They're like a predecessor for Rottweilers and German Shepherds and Dobermans right. and all these other dogs. Right. And they just like really slow to grow and have a lot of attitude. Yeah. And they're also called Falco dogs, so they yeah. never leave your side. Right? Yeah, right, right. So I'm going to be calling you up a lot. Um, but yeah, it's just having that connection or having somebody, you know, like you said, the wagging tail mm -hmm. and right, or opening the fridge, looking over the fridge, and there's somebody there all of a sudden because, right. oh, we're going to get treats now? Yeah, yes, right. yes, right. we are. Right. Or, you know, even just going to get dog food. It's like, I don't need to get dog food right now. Right. Or, you know, I should get up and do something. Let's go for a, oh, we can't go for a walk anymore because it would just be me. It's just these little things that you want to do every day. But they're serious things, though. Yeah, they're serious things. And I think, too, we're all, because when my dog Diesel died, mm -hmm. I mean, I remember it took me like three days because he had a stroke, which I didn't even know dogs would have strokes. Yeah. And I couldn't go to the hospital. I couldn't bring him to the animal hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, I told myself I'd never be that client that's going to prolong a dog's life, but I, I, I couldn't do yeah. it. I mean, I was li I was literally on the floor yeah. crying, like, uncontrollably. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the thing, too, with um, PTSD or, M you know, um, MST or TBI, people don't think that guys have these emotions. Right. And yeah, right. that the yeah. tough guy shouldn't cry, you know, yeah. be strong, you know, keep the face on, you know, but... Everyone, you know, is hurting right now. Oh, yeah. Even more so now because you just went through COVID. A lot of people weren't able to go to funerals and more mm -hmm. funerals. I mean, now you have the biggest race tension mm -hmm. war in global history right. um, on a level that no one has ever seen yeah. before. Um, and so you have a lot of pain that's going on. I think that I saw it firsthand um, of having to walk away from a situation of people just using I derogatory terms I hadn't heard for so long. Um, not in the last 20 years, yeah. for sure. But then that's where I feel dogs offer that level of um, therapy yeah. um, for human beings, which we know. But then I want to say way over to also that we know that you, we need therapy. Mm -hmm. for yeah. dogs. You know how dogs offer But it's also too what you put in your body. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. like right now, it's real, it's been real easy to sit and Netflix and chill, mm -hmm. order a thing of you know Kentucky Fried Chicken, yeah. finish it off with some you know some 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 sweet tea, yeah, yeah. and then wash it down with some chocolate hey, cake. Hey, yeah, I, you know, I still do that. Oh, <laughs> it's not as often. Right, right, right. right. It's not as often. Right. You know, right. you know, so, so yeah, no, you know, nutrition is huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, it, it just sets your your body up. To but how do you do Because I mean, food, energy. food is a drug, also. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. everything you put in your body is gonna make. A chemical reaction. You're gonna right. you're gonna react to it right. in some way. Um, you don't necessarily feel it right away, but it, it's just I'm glad you stop first eating that nice sausage warm pizza right, right now, followed by some sweet tea. You know what? Ice cream. It, it's it depends on where they're on at. On a daily basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A daily basis. It depends <laughs> on where they're at. I mean, I, I always you know the people that I normally um, you know uh, coach are people that are ready. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I and that, that word is so tricky. Are you ready? I mean, uh, who's ever ready? I mean, it's yeah. like, oh, I got to change. You know, change. That word change. Right. Come on, how, how many yeah. people like that word? Not right. many. Right. Not many people like the word. Some people love it. Like, I love change, you know. Uh, but most people don't. They're not about changing is scary. And so so what, what it is, though, is is do you want better for yourself? Do you want to feel the energy you had when you were in your teens and your right. 20s? Right. And that's possible. Right. That's possible. I mean, I'm living proof. I mean, I went from, you know, being an athlete, pro athlete, and having energy through the roof. Um, to being 307 pounds with wow. very little energy, depression, and everything wow. else that went with that, with wow. the bad food choices, wow. drinks, and all that stuff I was doing for 13 years, to now being in the best body in my life, even better than when I played pro ball. And so you said you ate bad for 13 years? Oh, so, yeah. For 13 years, I was, I mean, listen, I lived, I lived next to a hot dog joint. <laughs> Mickey's, remember Mickey's? Yeah. yeah Mickey's and Aristotle's right down the road. And oh, so you were Oh, yeah. So, so I was, you know, for, for a lot of it, for most of that. Yeah. So I was eating. You know, I love, I love Mickey's, man. I still, eat, I still go there when I, when I drive by. I have to stop and get a hot dog fries uh, or a beef. But, but this, it's one of those things that I do in, in, in the kind of occasions now, and I still right. enjoy life. Right. But, uh, but I choose healthy more often. But yeah, it's, 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 you know, making those choices 
is 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 what it is. It's a choice. Do you how do you want to feel? Do you want to live your life feeling less than what you know you can feel, right. or do you want to live your life feeling the best you can feel? Right. And I mean, it might seem hokey. It's it's not. I mean, I'm I'm sitting here telling you that I was a I was on rock bottom, right. literally on the deathbed, right. and I came from that and made a decision to change it right. and started using nutrition as my fuel. Right. And nutrition and, and cleansing, you know, a lot of things that we're putting in our bodies and breathing in the air and everything else is is, is toxic. And so that's something that we, that we do as well as we cleanse and cellular cleanse. And, and those are two things that I've incorporated in my life with my system is um, is the nutrition, which is superfood, uh, along with the cleanse, which I do once every month or two. And I live that life and I eat normal foods. So how long are you, you say you've been eating healthy? You're not right. Now you're back in your own track. Now. Seven years. Seven, Seven years. years. Seven so, years. so as soon as I had my years in 2013, I started eating healthier. Now, I've been perfect. No one's perfect, but I've eaten healthier for seven years. Okay. So 2013. 13 was my turning point. So what would you say then, Brian, then, because, I mean, in the I have two questions that I never thought about before. Do people eat healthy in the military? Depends. Or you like everywhere else. There's, all, there's guys that will eat healthy every day. I mean, if you go to the chow hall, it's a big buffet. You can get some good stuff. You can get some crap stuff. It's just about how you want to do it. Okay. So, but it's not necessarily like no U.S. military is saying like no. we are making sure you guys. Do. You'll get a nutritional daily allowance. Let's put it that way. Okay. But beyond that, yeah, but you choose. What you choose. Yeah. Eat. There's yeah, always a BK right. and a KFC and a Popeyes and a Subway on base somewhere. Like even my base at Fort Irwin, nearest McDonald's was 40 miles away. You better believe at least twice a week we made that 40 mile run. Okay. Right. But for the most part, we just went to the chow hall, ate at the chow hall. Now, how's your how's your diet? My diet needs some improvement. Okay. I mean, I'll be honest. I eat way too much junk food, but. I've been like, I turned 48 in August, and I'm like, I cannot eat like I did when I was 20. Right. Because it's going to kill me. Right. I mean, sure, I live in a place where there's a Popeyes and churches, a BK and a Subway, all within walking distance. Right. And Taco Bell now. Right. <laughs> and I, those I can list these all off. No. <laughs> right, right, right. But I'm also like, this also tastes like crap. You right. know, at some point, you're just like, I don't even want this stuff. Right. Why don't you just walk in my fridge and make something nice and healthy right. and just eat that? Right. So, now, with, with the veterans, though, I don't wanna, I'm going to ask you this question. Mm -hmm. You can chime in on this. And um, we're talking about this off camera today. You're welcome to hang mm -hmm. out. We're going to be talking about food and nutrition with the team. Because um, a lot with veterans, I mean, a lot of veterans and people have to, you know, if you know a veteran, help them because a lot of veterans struggle with just day to day bills. Day to day bills or so, just getting out. So then, so then, how does the, I mean, because unfortunately, eating healthy is not cheap. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain things that cost money to eat. You know, it's easier. I can, you know, McDonald's, the, the dollar special. Yeah. I go get a hamburger, mm -hmm. double cheese hamburger, mm -hmm. fries, drink, all under $5. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Right. Um, if I do that, you know, five days a week, you know, there's five times five. There's thirty dollars $30, I'm, I'm fed. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, versus right. $30 can be one item at Whole Foods. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know I mean, $30 can be two items at Jewel. Yeah. It might be 10 at all these. Yeah, right. But other than that, I mean, we're we're dropping unless we're buying some yeah. food at the dollar store. What do what do you say? Um, I'm putting you on the spot, being the veteran ambassador. You know, as mm -hmm. far as them figuring out how to eat healthy. It's more like I can't afford to eat healthy. I would you know, say healthy. first of all, um, eat, if getting the basics. Once you get the basics, everything else is easy. Like for me, I always have some spices, like allspice, pepper, paprika, cayenne. Um, eggs, milk, and um, you know, maybe bacon or some ham or something like that. And with that, you can make a nice quiche. You only need like four eggs, half a cup of milk, some cheese, and some bacon. You've made a quiche. And I can make a quiche in the last three, four days. And it cost me maybe six bucks. That's super fancy. A quiche. I want to make some quiche. <laughs> right? But the thing is, it's just like everything else. And the best way, for best, the best way to look at it is. Um, Just like, it's like boot camp. You train in boot camp to learn the basics, right? And the, those are skills you're gonna use for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Just like in the fridge, you get the basics. You can make all kinds of stuff from the basics, right? And it, you know, it can be a salad. It can be, um, you know, quiche if you want to do quiche. It can be just egg. It can be like I have stuff for sweet meatballs in my house right now. Um, I have a bunch of rice. There's just a lot of stuff you can get. 
relatively cheap, and you say, well, I don't have time to go to the store, or, you know, I don't want to go to the store, or it's all still too expensive, you go to the VA, I bet you your VA has a food pantry. And mm-hmm. those are like, oh, I don't want to go to the food pantry. That's for guys who really need it. So they have a, a food pantry in the actual VA hospital? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, okay. uh, Chicago's two VA hospitals, Jesse Brown and Hines. Every Thursday, Hines has a uh, food pantry, and Tuesdays, it's Jesse Brown has a food pantry. Okay. All you need to do is show your veteran ID or um, a, D, a DD-214, which is your discharge papers. That's okay. it. And they'll give you a crap load of food. I've taken best there, and they've walked out with enough food. They're like, I can't carry this all home. Like, two big boxes of food. Now, let me ask you a question. What, what would you want? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, two questions. One, do you cook? And then secondly, um, how how often do people actually know what to buy and right. to prepare? You know what? Um, I think... I, I can't speak on behalf of everybody, but I know that the people that I've you know, been friends with for the time I've been on this earth, is, a lot of people don't realize what good, healthy foods are and what aren't. We just grew up with McDonald's and Burger King yeah. and beef sandwiches and, and everything. We grew up with that in, in a lot. And, and just, hey, it is what it is. I mean, my, my, my mom and dad are great people, just like yours are, I'm sure. And they made, you know, Meat, mashed meat, mashed potatoes, and that was it. You know, fried chicken, and, and I, had, you know, black, you know, beans, and we had some, you know, healthy stuff too mixed in, mixed in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I think, you know, it's education, uh, being educated. That there's a lot of people that, that, and that's one thing where I get some pushback um, with some people is, uh, you know, there's, there's, I'm, edu- I'm, I'm helping educate some people with what is healthy and not, um, and I still eat some of the not healthy stuff quite often actually, but I, my, I eat more healthy way more often than I do the other things. So, but that was a choice. It's a choice decision that I made. Um, and it's not as hard as you think, you know, there's a lot of, you know, you know, as far as meats go, I mean, you've got chicken breast, you know, the, the, the you want the lean meats, the, the, like the white chicken breast, that's a lean meat. You got your bison meat, which is 90% better or better. You got your 90% lean beef you can get if you're a meat eater. You got, you know, uh, organic turkey breast, you have a filet cut steak, Mm-hmm. Those are nice. Those are all things that I, I don't know if you like. I love those, those, right? Yeah. So you, those are healthy choices. Um, less fat on the actual meat. So those are things that are just choices. Do they cost a little more? Of course, that's, that's, they do a little bit more, but not terrible. Not a terrible amount. Um, you know, with my system, it's five dollars per meal. This is a superfood. You're not going to get a superfood meal for five dollars mm-hmm. anywhere, besides something like what I'm doing. Right. And it's a superfood meal. It's a shake that has everything in it. And it tastes delicious. I mean, you, you know, it's not, you know, I hate even comparing it to like a, you know, any kind of like fast food shake, but it tastes as good as one of those, but it's got all your nutrients in there. So that's five, five dollars. Right. And then plus all the stuff that comes with it. Right. So, so there's, it's very, uh, you know, what I'm a part of is very affordable and, and, and it's, you know, your budget is yours and we find something that fits you. So okay. it really depends. But as far as overall eating the fork and knife meals go, it's just uh, being educated. There's right. a lot of people that um, that aren't really they just they just don't know any better yet. Let me ask. I'm gonna ask Ryan um, your your statement in closing. And then I'm gonna ask you a statement in closing um, for the people that are listening. Thank you, everyone out there that's listening. I love the hearts and little blowing up that's going there. Um, but I think we all I don't want to say um, we know we want to change. Mm-hmm. Some people aneurysm like me. Um, June 23rd, which is coming up next week, but I, I told my car, mm-hmm. you know, 2008, out drinking and driving, told my car, right. sat in Cook County Hospital for 65 days, wow. you know, broke my right femur in half, crushed my patella tendon, um, crushed my acetabulum, you mean, they wanted to cut my right leg off, I'm like, all right, fine, time to change, Right. <laughs> yeah, I good. quit, <laughs> like, like, thank God for all right leg, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, Mine is car accidents, aneurysms, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> and joining the military. Yeah. Um, I always tell people just to really, um, my my advice for people, I'll start, you know, then you go, and then I'll let you get into LB. Um, I always tell people, um, go experience something that's completely contradictory for your life that will make you question how great you have it. Meaning, I have a top three. Nick Units, Go see sick babies. Mm-hmm. It looks on par- parents. You will like, I love life. Right. Yeah. Cancer units. Mm-hmm. You will say, I love life. Age units. I love life. Go to Cook County jail. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
I love life, right? Right. Um, or just go through some of these areas, like right now in North Lawndale, where the average income is thirteen thousand dollars per year, per year. You know, I mean, like right now, it looks terrible there. It looked like a bomb ran through there, or Minneapolis. Like right. our friend re- referring to Minneapolis uptown as Ground Zero mm-hmm. right now, which is crazy. Right. Crazy. Right. But I tell people, go experience, put yourself in a situation. Here's my top five. Right. Go see something. That, there's so many different things you can experience that'll make you like, "Wow, I got it good." There's always there's levels to this, right? Right. What would you say, Brian? If you had to um, hear some like wake up call to give them a jolt to watch this video, hear this podcast, like mm-hmm. motivation to change. Go volunteer somewhere. Yeah. Everybody says, "Oh, I've got it so hard. I've got it so hard." Uh, you know, everybody's on me. Go volunteer somewhere and see other people's situation because I think empathy is really a thing that changes who you are because if you live in your bubble all the time you're like mm-hmm. i'm surrounded by people that always look like me that think like me that we always do the same thing right then how do you know what the rest of the world looks like right if you go volunteer somewhere it doesn't even have to be somewhere serious it doesn't have to be like oh, i went to the homeless shelter i mean you can go volunteer that's the point yeah anyway you can go to the dog shelter you can go volunteer at the food bank you mm. can go volunteer at the hospital mm-hmm. and then you're going to see some people come in with a different attitude a different yeah. situation and you're going to be like wow wait a minute Maybe they're experiencing the same thing I am, or I did point. not yeah. think about that. That and the other thing would be travel. Just go travel. Right. Try something completely new. You're like, I just want to go see that place. All right, go see that place. See what's like. And someplace different. Someplace different. That's like yeah, and you know and you don't people think when they say travel, they think you don't have to go out the country. You don't have to go out. There's, the country. there's places in Illinois that you can be like, yeah. you had no idea yeah, that, that exists. Um, yeah, you can go like. Go to Southern Illinois and see what Southern Cairo, Illinois is. Cairo, Illinois. Yeah. Where it's Cairo. like, it's burnt out. It's a right. city that literally it's still recovering. Mm-hmm. I mean, a town, it's a ghost town, but they can still live there. That's, um, yeah. Just go see something yeah. completely different. Don't go to the touristy sections. You know, right. you know, Walt Disney's coming out of my house right now. But go to, like, I don't know, go to the Badlands of South Dakota. Right. Like, see what's there. We live in a giant country with huge amounts of. Diversity and things like that. Get out your comfort zone. Get out your comfort zone. Yeah. What do you think, what's, what's, your, what's, your, what's your thing? You just said exactly what I was going to say. Is um, you know, one thing I've learned to do since I was in my rut and not wanting to be around uh, anymore was I got out of my comfort zone. Yeah. And that's basically what you were saying. I mean, I, you guys nailed it. I mean, you've really got a lot more to say, but but getting out of your comfort zone, like put yourself in someone else's shoes. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like my wife, you know, uh, I love my wife dearly. She's got stage four breast cancer. Mm. You know, she's, um, wow. she's fighting the fight. And, mm. uh, you know, and, and to see that what she's going through on a daily basis, you know, mm. how am I going to, you know, sit there and, and complain about much, right. right? And then you got my dad, you know, that's my, my, my dad. He coached me all through my, my youth. He's got dementia, doesn't even know my name anymore. Wow. And I'm junior. Wow. And so we can't, I don't, we don't even have a conversation. It's just, there's this, this just can't happen right now. So you got to put yourself in other people's shoes. Um, if you can find yourself and do that, mm-hmm. you know, to have the grace to do that and, and get out of your mm-hmm. comfort zone. Grace. Man, mm-hmm. you got yeah, to have the grace, man, because uh, we, we get one go at this life right. as far as I know. So I just think, you know, getting out of your comfort zone, put yourself in other people's shoes. Um, don't be afraid of change. Yeah. You know, fear, fear is just a lie. Yeah. You know, you, mm. you know, it's a lie, and you just gotta, you gotta get over that fear of change and and, um, and make it happen because it's uh, we we're living, we have our lives to live, and you know, if your family, you know, your family man or uh, whatever, you you want to make sure that you're you're giving the right vibe off to your, your kids, mm-hmm. and your, your your spouse, and so yeah, just get out of your comfort zone. Yep. And I want to thank everybody out there. I want to thank my awesome, amazing friend Brian Brown. <laughs> And learning so much about veterans. Um, go support some veterans. PTSD is real. 20 vets per day. That hurts my heart. Um, find my buddy, high school buddy, grandma's buddy, um, Albie Shepard. Go to his cage. We're going to talk about, we're about to have a little offline meeting talking about yummy foods. Feed your mind right. Love yourself. Love somebody. Don't let this COVID, don't let any of this stuff get to you because at the end of the day, you got one life to live. Make the best of it. Peace, Trey Ellis and Zoe.
PTSD, yeah. all everything we just named, TBI, sexual trauma. And another thing too, people aren't realizing that they might come against some type, like last week. Yeah. So this dumb statue, this has been my whole thing all week. I don't know if you've been seeing my Facebook page. Okay. But um we did a peaceful um pet walk, right? Ended it right down the block. Maybe 10 minutes when I get there, white cop. Actually a little bit, a little bit shorter than you, barely. I'm like, dude, that already is freaking yeah. me out. Cause I, not, no PTSD, just from, right. just from cause I, I'm, I'm right. martial arts and I just do personal security. Right. Like, was like, he didn't scream at me. Right. As long as you're right there. Proximity. I call it the yeah. circle of love. As long as you're not in the circle of love, we're good. I can do that shit all day. Right. So he's right here and I'm just like, dude, let's. Yeah. He's like, and he realized I stepped back. Cause I, I treat police like I'm like, I'm trained to, like, I, if I got, like, I got an American Bulldog back there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you don't have one. I'll show you. The dog named Bones. Mm -hmm. Don't walk up on him. Just let him be. So I treat cops the same way. Right. I'm like, you're right there. I'm right here. We're good. Right. I mean, that, that's, yeah, yeah, honestly, yeah. God, that's the shit that breaks my heart, man. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know that shit as a black male, anyone. Right. Because yeah. actually, the Something stats, like, what? What the stats between on um, black and white being killed by cops is not really. You're all only under us by like 30, 40,000. Right. It's, because it's not some big. It's not like. Two hundred thousand right. black. You are getting killed too. Right. Yeah. It's just like it's just like pit bulls actually bite less. Right. Yeah. Lambs like just don't make the news. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You getting shot is not great news. Right. right. Us getting shot, normally there is something else attached to it. Right. I mean, it just make good news. So it's, it's literally the same thing. Yeah. Pit bulls actually bite less, but you're gonna hear about a pit bull. Right. But he comes up to me. Boom. Um, they said that you painted the statue. I literally had been there maybe 10 minutes. I don't know if to hit him with some sarcasm. I don't know if to be right. pissed off. You know what I mean? Right. 
I don't know if just to walk away. Right. But these are things that life or death in milliseconds. Right. Because you have a weapon of mass destruction. Right. You have a taser. You have a club. You have a badge. Right. And there's three of you. And there's one me. Right. I have none of those things. Right. At all. I mean, I can have, I got sarcasm. I got anger. Right. <laughs> I can walk away. Right. One of the three. I got to choose. Right. right. I kind of in between sarcasm and um and and, and angry. Mm-hmm. Like, well, first, it's clearly spray painted. Painted can be this. Right. right <laughs> Someone right. spray painted. No, I didn't. I just got it. But you should go check to see if it's still if it's dry. You know. Right. He's like, no. I, they called me. I know you didn't. Okay. But the fact but that the initial walk up yeah, could have been yeah. something if it was some if it wasn't you, saying, bro, you yeah, it's yeah, your military. Right. right. You could have had an episode. Right. Or like they don't know your military. There's I don't no, know a lot of guys up there. Especially yeah. with the with the tension. Yeah. Oh, like what's why, his intention? Why guy walking like up, I mean, yeah, I know a lot of and then asking you some questions, you're mm-hmm. like, dude, that's fucking ass and I just got here. Yeah. Clearly. But um that's um a thing too, man, I, I see like gonna be huge. It's already happening, man. With on um, the, the, and that's the part I, I, I hate to say it. You affirmed it um, from a military stance. You affirmed it. I'm affirming it from a security stance. Watching the trend in my own business, the dog, um, guard dogs. We, we can't keep them in right now. Oh, like I'm like I got bidding wars with dogs right now. Oh, yeah. I got dogs I don't want to sell because the longer I keep it, the price is increasing. I mean, I got a lab right now that I'm like that went from two. He's at six right now. Right. Like. If I kept him to August, for sure he's fifteen grand. You know what I mean? So I gotta like decide what point I want to cash. Every dog now I'm deciding what point I want to cash out. Right. 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 But um, the crazy thing, man, that I see it firsthand that I, I where I'm, I'm so I don't know the word for it. Um, like there's our new. I guess I'm kind of morbid about it because I lived in Kenya where you wake up every day, as soon as you step out the house, right. some shit can go wrong. Right. Period. It just matters if it's gonna go wrong with you. Right. Or some shit's gonna go wrong. You're gonna see some crazy ass shit no, no. every fucking day. Right. Like, oh shit, that nigga yeah, just got his head chopped off. Like, like for real. Yeah, right. Like literally. Like <laughs> they just cut his head off because right. he stole some shit. Yeah. There's like, like no law kind of shit. It's no. Like, the law is you're, you're chopping off with the fuck. Right. Oh, it's real about it. But then there's someone driving a Range Rover like nothing's happening. Right. Right. You know what I mean? But then over there just kids with you know, street clips sniffing glue when they got machetes and they're walking around with shit demanding money. You know what I right, mean? Right. But that's the day and that's like and, but yeah. um like we're so close to that because man the racial tension which is like PTSD of steroids, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, or like being open for the first time and no one knows what that looks like, kinda like a veteran yeah. you you your all, for example. Like this guy in Joe Trainer man, like he was li- literally he had no friend because like we could just been here talking, and something could send him. Yeah. And I mean, when he's when he got sent, he's getting violent. Mm. I mean, to the point like like he's going dude, back to like, like one day he came to my house. We were in West Side Chicago. Yeah. This is a quick story. Like when we talk about PTSD, he's like now he's he's built. He's chiseled. Right. He comes over to my house with no shirt on. I'm like, I'm like dude, can you actually over here, bro? Yeah. These motherfuckers that they take that shit some like jelly art shit. Yeah. Like on some right. like intimidating, jumping out your car, fucking walking, like don't do yeah, that yeah. ever again, ever. You know what I mean he's like, I saw that little click in the eyes. I'm like, what? Oh shit! Uh, like, what I, what I say? Mean, what happened? Right. right. You know what I mean, and that's what I see that's happening. That man, there's gonna be fucking dumbass conversations and gas stations going on, grocery stores mm-hmm. going on. That's a shame. I'm I'm very concerned about college kids going back to high school because kids are mean yeah. on normal yeah. days. Yeah, I'm trying to fit it. Be a cool kid on the block. You know what I mean? Everyone, like, the leadership, and this is where, too, where, like, someone asked me, the, uh, I totally appreciate people that ask me real questions. Um, he was like, well, who are you going to vote for? And I was like, you don't want my answer. They're like, why? I said, because I honestly believe that there's going to be a breakdown in the entire government. Right. Like, like we, because for so long, America is so hubris that we can't have a coup. Cool. Right, right. If, I mean, I'm praying that we don't. Because what the fuck does that look like? Yeah. You mean, but, mm. but I mean, Trump did hire yeah. Bessie DeVos, whose brother is Eric Prince. Mm. Eric Prince um, owns um, Blackwater. You mm. know Blackwater? I, I, Blackwater I, I, basically is 
how would you describe Blackwater? As like it's a bunch of old. It's a bunch of vets that were on the wrong side of the war, <laughs> and now they're outside, and now they get to do whatever the fuck they want. They form their own. Right. Because how, how how deep would you say they are? Uh, I think probably twenty thousand in Blackwater right now. That's enough to talk. No, that's cool. enough to cause a lot of shit. Yeah. Right, and they got shit. Yeah. They got real shit. Yeah, they got real shit. They got military shit, right? Yeah. Like, you remember Chaps, shit, right? Yeah. Okay, so my buddy Chaps works over at Rush now. Um, Silver Star, Delta Force. He literally was Delta Force. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, just for shits and giggles, he uh, applied for Blackwater back in the day. Yeah. And in 2001, got some important, though. He turned it down because it's not working. Oh. But those are the kind of guys. Yeah, like, like my guy was in it. Um, like, I used my guy like, yeah, he, but they basically he was making thirty five thousand a month, but on paper he, he didn't exist. Right, yeah. he was a ghost, yes. he was a ninja, yeah. basically. But I'm saying that yeah. that's There's not scary guys out there. That's not beyond no. like reproach of like Trump loses his ball suddenly, no. black water surrounding the White House, and we get fight. Right. You know I mean, yeah. and I told someone it's like, what if Trump loses? I'm like. How do you evict the president? Right. What do you mean evict the president? I said, dude, like, we all know he's fucking crazy. What if you just plow? I said, fuck it. You lost. Yeah. What? Well, no, you lost. What? Exactly. No, you gotta, you gotta, like, leave. Why? You mean, mm-hmm. well, that would, someone told me, like, well, that would never happen. Like, dude, like, you've been living with, that would never happen from COVID to George. No right. one thought that. Everything's happening. Killing yeah. a black yeah. man would literally. Right. Set the entire war. I look, bro. Last week, I literally like stopped a race war. Right. We're just out there chilling. He's a tiny man. Get the fuck out of here, you motherfucking nigga. Really? Motherfucker. Yeah. Dude, I'm like, let's go. Like, my best friend is still upset at me for screaming at her, saying, like, dude, get your fuck over. Yeah. There's no fucking it's a winning peaceful there. protest. You can't win with these guys. Yeah, that's a, and that's me being a peaceful one, but I'm saying, you, right, so I'm right, right now, that. That. no, and like, like, white or black. No, yeah, yeah, I don't like people to be like, hey, fuck you. Oh, yeah, no, well, no. Who the fuck are you to tell? And, yeah, and that's what happened. So, you know, and that's, you know, and you know what I know for sure, unfortunately, it's not going to last because I saw these young kids, man, and I, it hadn't dawned on me. I don't think this is the part of not talking about the news. So, we're all in our 40s plus, right? Yeah. We've heard, we've seen racist ass shit. We like, and unfortunately, we're somewhat desensitized with it, right? But 25 and under, this uh, shit, they don't know. They don't Dude, know. I saw a look in these motherfuckers. I got two of them here. Like, I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Like, they was ready to go. Uh-huh. Like, I literally, outside of treating them like they were five years old, I'm like, Dude, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, they were trying to they were ready to yeah. go. Oh, yeah. they would they, they would black now, but they yeah. never heard me oh, yeah. right. live. Right, right. Ever. Yeah. Other than a rap song. Right, right. Like, right. They're like, oh shit. And then, right. then a couple of them, the girls were like, they're getting like pumped up by like, oh, this that shit they saw on TV. Mm-hmm. They never been around right. any kind of protest or riot or social. So the, the 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 country as a whole, they've been looking for how do you activate? How do you get these? Because right now we got close to twenty million first time voters. Yeah. Like how do you get them activated? How do you get them going? But now because you don't have a leader of them, mm-hmm. they technically can just take over and do shit. Yeah. Because. I lined uh, 20 cops with shields and clubs. It just They just have not had the right. You're lucky there's not been a leader in charge of that, like yeah. a coordinated effort of like, right. this right. is how we're going to reach this and to right. get whatever, man. But I was looking at um, my friend who lives in the Trump Tower, and he was terrified. Like, right. literally, he was saying, like, he was showing me video that you weren't going to see on TV. Dude, they literally are, and it was all white kids. I was saying, like, White just doesn't make because it's not popular. Right, right. <laughs> don't want to see some. <laughs> don't want to see some white kids. I mean, they yeah. whooping these white kids, and because it was like, all right, you gonna push against this shield, yeah. boom, open it up, you fall in. Yeah. They are whooping these mother. I mean, yeah. Amnesty International one on one. I mean, they are whooping these motherfuckers' asses. It was like, I feel like for the first time, and I mean, we always should be doing something, right. but for the first time ever, if we don't do something specifically. I don't know, one, two, three. Right. <laughs> we know better, and whoever else there is in the same realm as us that knows better. It could be at. It could honestly be at a point where you're scrambling, yes. uh, and we and we have real examples of that. 
You mean Hurricane Katrina? Yeah. My cousin was down there, man. He walked off. He's like, dude, I can't do it. He was a he was a police officer down there. He's like, he said, I can't do it. That shit went on for a while. Right. People forget about that shit. Oh, yeah. That shit was fucked up for a while. Nine yeah. eleven, man. When I was in Minnesota, they came. That's why people don't realize how so tense with the police in Minnesota because nine eleven, fucking every fucking government agency raiding fucking Ethiopian um, temples, temples, businesses, yeah. just on some like fucking old school like Japanese yeah. concentration camp shit. You mean like we do a lot of fucked up shit, and I feel like for the first time in U.S. history, all that shit's coming back. Oh yeah, for sure. Agreed. Yeah, get away with this summer for sure. Oh man, hey, get, I'm gonna go through this with you guys. So I'm gonna bring it with us. Uh, um, so I thought you were gonna that good that I'm here. Like, ah, I'm gonna go. Yeah, go around. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Okay, you need your left hand. Push on. Push on. Push on. Yeah. That's too big. Um, like twelve fifty. Okay, that's good. Yeah, they're like twelve all the money and all that, and then up to to the hub. Okay. For all the quality, that's the quality. So. Oh, man. Yeah. Like those, I mean, yeah. like that means it's serious enough to be really on. You want to see? You want to? Yeah. You want to? You want to see that whole thing? We're gonna have to take a trip down to other places to see all of them. Where are some of them Florida, Texas, California, and Chicago. Nothing here. Well, there wasn't one nearby in Indiana, but it's never gone back. So, whatever. You like the blue raspberry? Yeah. So, I put that in the water. Oh, ah. It's a solid hydration. So, I can't see. Do you have any harm with it? Nice boy. You all should know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I'll man, what we can do here is on purpose. You don't have a car. I don't have a car right now, but. If you're cool with it, I can get it. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. Okay. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. I hope we have. I hope we have. I hope we have. You know what? I can look at it. Hopefully, we still have a work date, but. Uh, Oh, the first one too is a organization that doesn't give people the best year about, and hope I can get with the group work on the ocean class. Yeah, that's the idea. It's all about the nutrition. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally simple. Yeah, you definitely do. You are definitely doing this as well as you're all the best, man. I know I have been working out for seven years and saying, I can't do that. That's a great game of song.
shots in the season under the shot. That's the one that's 
this is my question. So, I want to be there. Yeah, dude, did you want to get How long? Can I be there this year? This year? In 2020? Yeah. Zero doubt. So, once again, just a question. I know how to take that go in there. That's my yeah, that's, that's what I do. That's what I do. That's that's all. All. No, that's, that's he, he's definitely dying. Oh, like, I can accept him from that. I'm not bad. I know I take the train. Like, those who be over there, those who live up there, and then they're going to eat to you. I can take you on. I can make you on that. Do you really technology? technology. That's the motive. What kind of coach me to get to that? That's the reason. How often do you and I need to interact together to that face? I mean, it doesn't even have to be any body scale of mine. You don't even have to. Honestly, I mean, I would have a lot of parents. We'll get it together. No problem. But it's not necessary, honestly. I can literally ask you to buy you and why you come out here.
crazy ass. I know you bad at our now.
they never just drop the leash like that just in case she dropped the leash and didn't tell her off it. Bro. Hey, but all the time. Bro, I'll be going to work with us on um, coaching everyone who's doing on personal fitness and um, um, training program. I definitely got it down there. We all got a balance. Yeah. 
May 26th. Actually, that's quite the start. The price started on the 25th. Okay. The price started on the 25th. So we're one month away from I'm doing all race. The overall race is July 1st. And then we might start lighting up. I don't know. This is last year, by the way. Friday, man. This guy, he, look, he, he gets away from it. He gets away. As he gets away, he throws the, he's man on the two white tops. Look, he gets away. He gets away. <laughs> he got away. He shot him five times. Back. No, he shot him the back. He was, man, land on fire right now. That was just last Friday. Yeah. Dr. Johnson is back running away. No, no. You have this car because, like, but anyway, we're going with that. On my Montgomery Black, I'm just going to race, race, race. On my Wookiee Green, we're going to race. Dogs, ain't that bad. Shit's fucked up. Right. Race. Dogs, ain't that bad. Shit's fucked up. July 1st. Start lightening it up. July 4th, Independence Day. July 4th to my birthday, August 4th, we'll start lighting it up. And then once, like, July 23rd gets here, that's when we'll be like, all right, whatever's going on in the world, right. I'm going to feel, now I got to start going back to my lifestyle. Right. For me, like, well, that's right. I mean, obviously, I'm going to do that too. So, um, so yeah, so I got to have two minutes. Okay. All right, you so, man. Yeah. So, so wait, I'm ready. What is this? Is this all Seattle stuff? Yeah, sure. Man. All right, I give it to you. So that's two two suits, but it's not local shape. This is a seasonal shape. So unfortunately, this isn't something you can just get. It's okay. something that is a seasonal. Okay. Uh, but that's one of our shapes. Okay. So uh, so basically, two suits between you can use between uh, between eight and fifteen ounces of water. I like mine with fifteen. So if you want a shape, you want to be like extra large. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm a double X. Yeah, so when you, um, yeah, so, so, so as far as getting me set up, I didn't want to run with it. So, I, I, this is the thing. I'm not sure. My, my wife is the decision maker. I'm the decision maker, but she's, you know, what she's going through, I don't. I don't know. What's that? About the dog. I'm oh, honestly, sure. bro. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I see the whole, look at dog. You're going to come to me. I'm going to come to you. Know, okay. You're going to come to me. Too. You're gonna be in two years, and you're like, and then you'll be like, I don't know what I like. She's not saying no, but she's just so. Very hard. I'm, I'm saying with that, with that time, like this American Bulldog. Guy went out to get four grand. Who dog he is? I don't want to get to it. Um, but yeah, man. They fit for him. Right. Now he's my dog. But when he was cute, like a little baby, baby like, they didn't put it in, and now they're, in the, now they're jammed up. But after now and then, like I said, I've never even seen a puppy, man, since I had one. Like, everybody waits until the bones. Everybody waits until you're adults, and then on. But then, at that point, we should do a picture. All right. Wow. 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 Wow.
because the kids came over the napkin is just so terrific. But they don't they don't absorb like a German shepherd, I've been trained at like like a German Shepherd, I can do my eight weeks, eight months or a year, I won't end up in the same spot. Right. And now, like, what Brian was talking about, like, drum, 